Good morning. Are you guys ready? All right, wake up. It's time for church. We're gonna dance. We're gonna sing. We're gonna get real loud. Let our voices ring. We're gonna party. We're having fun with Jesus Christ. He's got. Good morning, guys. It's Pastor Rob here from North Avenue Church of God, welcoming you to Ignition Sunday for August 23rd. Hope you're all having a great week. It's been a busy week for me, and I imagine you guys are all getting ready to start school in one shape or form or fashion this week. Uh, I know that um, my daughter goes back to school tomorrow, and she's excited, so... Hope you guys are getting all your pencils and your notebooks and everything that you need to start school and have a great year. Uh, I want to remind all of you out there that uh, we are having live services, adult and family services, at our main campus at 1079 North Avenue. Uh, there will be no children's service there right now, but uh, if you want to bring your kids, they can sit with you in the sanctuary, which we have cordoned off for safety. And if Uh, You can please wear a mask when you're in the common areas or unable to maintain social distancing as we are practicing safe services. So uh, 930 service, which if you're seeing me, you probably have already missed, and the 11 o'clock, which I'm sure you can catch if you hop in the car right now. 1079 North Avenue, right uh, behind the corner of North Avenue and Morgan Road in Battle Creek. I want to remind you guys also, if you're in uh, middle school, you attend the middle or Club 56 on Wednesdays, or you did last year anyway, uh, we'll be having a hangout cookout today at Justin and Lisa's house. Uh, the information is on the Facebook page under events, and you're welcome to join us if you are a member of one of those two groups. Uh, we'll be there from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., and look forward to seeing you. So uh, head out there. If you need more information, uh, check our Facebook page under events. All right, guys, let's check out our point for the week. And our point this week says... Live pure, don't tempt your friends to sin. Can you guys say that with me? Live pure and don't tempt your friends to sin. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's check out our verse that goes with it. Our verse today comes from Romans chapter 14, verse 13, which says, Make up your mind not to put anything in your brother's way that would make him trip and fall. And so... Have any of you ever had one of those friends that talked you into doing things that you might not want to do or didn't know you wanted to do before they told you how great it would be? I know I have. And sometimes we need to make sure, well, all the time, we need to make sure that we're not that kind of friend, that we're not the kind of friend that talks our friends into doing things that their parents don't want them to do, whether it be listening to certain types of music or watching a certain movie or going places they're not supposed to go. The Bible says we're not supposed to place anything in our friend's way that would cause them to fall. And that's great advice. Let's make sure that we live by that advice this week. All right. Are you guys ready to do some singing? Jump up off the couch and push back your cereal bowl. This is one of my favorite parts of the morning. We are going to do our... actually got two songs for you this week. Got a little crazy over here at Ignition Central. So 
Uh, push back your cereal bowl, jump up, tie up your pajama pants, and let's get ready to sing and dance and praise God together. You know what? You may not be the best singer, but you can still honor God with songs. And you may not be the best dancer, but you can still give it all you've got. You want to know why? It's because worship isn't about how good you are. It's about how good God is. I know that God loves it whenever we connect with Him together at church. So, sing aloud and dance for Him with all you've got. Get up on your feet and let's connect with God together.
What a couple of cool songs. I hope you enjoyed both of those. And so as we're talking about songs today, our discussion question for today is... And while we don't have small groups, obviously, well, we do have small groups. You have some really small groups there in your house. Get with your mom and dad, whoever's around you, and talk about the silliest song that you have ever heard. And if you're watching live, uh, pop it onto the chat box there and let me know what it was. I remember a guy back a long time ago. His name was Weird Al Yankovic, and he made some super silly songs. Some of your parents might remember him. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. All right, I'm going to let you enjoy your message this week. We're going to take you over to Connect HQ, and then I will be back with you in just about 15 minutes. Enjoy. I believe this movie is finally out and ready to stream. I know, man. The Battle for Skeleton Rock, the final film of the epic blockbuster franchise of the decade. Captain Chiropractor and the Adjustment Squad. Captain Chiropractor and his team of bone-breaking superheroes fight against the gutless, hairless army on their home turf, Skeleton Island. Will Captain Chiropractor overcome his mortal enemy, King Eye Socket? Will the Adjustment Squad pull off the ultimate realignment? Will the third act drag a little bit with clunky dialogue and one too many endings? Wait, have you already seen it? Yeah, I saw it when it was in theaters. Opening night, I was first in line. Well, I don't mind seeing it again. Edison! We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world. Live God's way. We look for the links. Make the connection. And you never know what might happen. My name is Ray, and this is the time we helped our friends say no to sin. Oh, hey, Rodney. I'd like to introduce you to... It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Jacob, but you can call me Jake. I'll be joining your crew as a new trainee. Hey, Jake. Boy, that is a good grip you got there. (laughs) Captain, what official protocol should I use for addressing my new colleagues? Are first names okay, or should I go by rank? I want to make sure I'm following your standards, (sighs) ma'am. Well, first names are fine. Officially, of course. But you can call me Hey Dude, or The Dude, or El Duderino for long, if you like. No thanks. Okay. Hey, Jake, it's your first field office message. Would you like to do the honors, Jake? Just push that button right there. Left or right hand, Captain? Uh, just... I'll get it this time. Hey there, Connect HQ. This is Field Officer Ed. This is my friend Alan. We're just chilling here on top of Mount Everest. Alan has a real head scratcher. Well, uh, there's a song. It's called the Monster Moose Shuffle. It's a local dance song. Big hit on the Tundra Circuit. Monster Moose, 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 Monster Moose, Moose, Monster Moose. ah. (laughs) (laughs) That is catchy. Monster Moose, Moose, Moose. Monster moose, moose, moose. Ah! <laughs> <clears throat> Anywho. Well, everyone at my school loves this song, but my best friend isn't even allowed to listen to it. His parents say it's not for his family. They don't like the lyrics. So, whenever he's at my house, we have to turn it off. There's nothing in the Bible about the monster moose shuffle, so I don't really see any reason why he can't listen to it, especially when he's with me and his parents aren't around. Let us know what you think, Connect HQ. So, what do you think, team? This requires clear, unambiguous rules. For me, the clearer the rules are, the easier they are to obey. I like your enthusiasm, Jake, but I think the problem that Alan is struggling with is the fact that the Bible doesn't specifically tell us what songs we should or shouldn't listen to. But it does tell us to obey our parents. Alan is tempting his friend to disobey the rules. 
You're right. And we can find links that will help him to live a pure life. Maybe Alan's friend could just put earplugs in his ears until the song's not popular anymore. But how would he hear important things like fire alarms? Or the ice cream truck. <laughs> Rodney, you can find the verse link. I'll look for a point link. I like your initiative, Jake. That sounds great. And I'll look through the Bible links to find a story that will help Alan to not tempt his friend to sin. You'll never board the chopper, you sauceless ribs! <laughs> no, he has a sort of sinew! Sinew? Uh, you. Oh, hi. Hi? I didn't see you there. Are, are you a fan of Captain Chiropractor? I saw the first one. <laughs> I didn't sleep for a month. I'm not a fan of skeleton movies. Okay. <laughs> I'm Jake. I'm a new trainee. Nice to meet you. I was just about to pause this and grab a snack. Do you want something from the lounge? Actually, that sounds pretty good. I need to replenish my energy. <laughs> Are you just going to leave that movie in here? With me? Alone? I paused it. Just knowing that's there gives me the heebie-jeebies. Um, got it. Okay. Point link. Point link. Point link. All I can think about is skeletons. Oh, hey, how far along are you in the movie? I'm about halfway. So they haven't gotten to the part where they rescue Princess Bonet from the knuckle oh, pressure? No, spoilers. Sorry. Hey, while you're here, can you help me with something real quick? Um, sure thing. As long as you don't spoil any more of the movie. I promise. I'm working on a problem, and I'm trying to find some verse motions from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 13. Will you say them with me? Sure. Romans 14, 13. Romans 14, 13. Make up your mind not to put anything in your brother's way. Make up your mind not to put anything in your brother's way. That would make him trip. Ah, and fall. That would make him trip. Ah, and fall. Yeah. That's a good reminder. What kind of problem are you working on? Well, the Bible makes it very clear that some things are wrong for everybody. And on those issues, it's crystal clear. Like no lying, no stealing, don't love anything more than God? Exactly. But some things aren't so clear. Like, the Bible doesn't tell us what movies we can't watch or what songs we can't listen to. For those things, we have to go to God to find out what's right for us. And usually our parents and leaders help us set those rules. I think this verse will remind our friend Alan that if something's right for you, but it's wrong for your friend, you shouldn't tempt them to make the wrong choice. It's better not to hear a song. Or watch a movie. If it makes your friends feel bad or tempted to sin. Like the monster moose shuffle. Monster moose, moose, moose. Ah! <laughs> Instant classic. Are you not familiar with that? No. Oh, I gotta show you. Hey, Captain Ray. How's the point link coming along? It's been slow going. Is there a dedicated Q&A time on our daily schedule? Yes, approximately any time o'clock. Okay, here's the question that has me stumped. Why isn't God more specific? Sure, I know some things are bad, but how do I know which ones? That's a good question. The answer is that he trusts us. You know when something isn't sitting right with you. Like skeleton movies. I am not a big fan of those. <laughs> Me either. Sometimes you hear the Holy Spirit inside of you whispering, this isn't for you. I've felt that before. <laughs> Sometimes he sends our parents or leaders who already know that something isn't good for us or our families, and we have to make sure that we trust them. Other times it's just you and the Holy Spirit, and you have to make sure that you're listening to that small voice inside of you. That makes sense. It also makes sense that if her friend tells you that she isn't allowed to eat dessert before dinner, then you shouldn't eat it either. Or at least not when you're with her. It would be wrong to tempt her to do something she knows isn't right for her. Or encourage her to ignore what God is leading her to do. So, it sounds like the best answer is to live pure. Don't tempt your friends to sin. That's it. What's it? Uh, that's your point, Link. Live pure. Don't tempt your friends to sin. I don't think I could have come up with anything better myself. Really? Okay. I think I'm getting the hang of this.
I found the verse link. And I found my first point link. High five. <laughs> and I found the Bible link. I have it pulled up right here. Take a look and see what you think. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. is alive. When we follow Jesus, we live the way the Bible says to. That pleases God. But what if other people who are following Jesus and living to please God make different choices? Who's wrong? Who's right? The people in New Testament Bible times wanted to know this too. When the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the first Christians living in the city of Rome, he told them not to argue with each other about what they thought was right or wrong. For instance, the Roman Christians disagreed about what was right to eat. Some people wanted to follow the Old Testament rules about food to please God. But others believed that as long as you thank God for the food, it shouldn't matter. Paul told them to handle it this way. Don't let it bother you and stop trying to boss people around who don't agree with you. Paul said to let God be the one to speak to others about what pleases him and what doesn't. So, however we live, we should do it to honor God. We belong to Him, and we should try to do things His way, even if that seems different from how other people do. And when others who follow Jesus make choices different from ours, we don't look down on them. We aren't the ones who will judge each other. When we die, we will answer only to God, not to our friends, parents, or anyone else. We'll get to kneel down before God, tell Him the way we lived, and God will judge us based on how well we obeyed Him. But even though we shouldn't judge others who follow Jesus or boss them around, we need to help them learn and grow. We can make choices that won't tempt them to trip and fall down. But what does that really mean? How can we cause someone else to trip and fall? Here's the answer. Don't do things that lead others away from Jesus. Make choices that point them to Jesus. It's like the argument the people were having about food. Paul talked to the Christians who didn't think rules were important for food. He told them to go ahead and follow those rules when they ate with their friends that did believe the food rules were important. But why did Paul say that? Because eating what you want just isn't worth it if it hurts someone's walk with God. It's better to show love to someone who thinks differently than you do about food. And when you get down to it, following Jesus isn't about what you eat. It's not about which books you read what shows you watch, or games you play. You and your family might have different rules from other families, but keep it between you and God. Don't make a big deal out of it and try to make everyone follow your rules. Following Jesus is about living a godly life, having peace between each other, and joyfully letting God's Spirit live in you and lead you. If you serve Jesus with this attitude, you'll please God and other people will be drawn to Jesus, too. So you can know what to do by reading the Bible and obeying God's voice inside you. If you're not sure if something pleases God, then don't do it. Anything you believe is wrong, and anything you're not sure about is a sin, even if others are doing it. When you obey God's Spirit, you'll be blessed. So let's aim for getting along with others who follow Jesus and let's use kindness to help each other live to please God. No more arguing or judging. 
that's perfect for Alan's problem. The Bible does have answers for us whenever we think that something's okay, but someone else thinks that it's wrong. Alan shouldn't argue, judge, or tempt his friend to do the monster move shuffle. <laughs> I think that we have all of our links so that we can send a connection transmission. Good job, team. Oh, hey, Edison was looking for you. Uh, something about popcorn? He probably got too involved with a scary movie. Mm. Actually, I saw that one already. Uh, it's not really that scary. In the end, they blow up Skull Island and destroy the whole skeleton army. Good to know. No, it, we love the monster moves, right? But you, did you know that it's just a remake of the monster goose? Didn't you ever hear that song? Oh, it's just awesome. Oh, look, Alan, Connect HQ just sent us an answer. Oh, nice. Hey there, friends. I'm Ray, and I'm the captain here at Connect HQ. I found an answer for your problem. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans. Say it with me like this. Romans 14, 13. Make up your mind not to put anything in your brother's way that would make him trip ah, and fall. Sometimes the Bible tells us plainly what a sin is, and other times it doesn't. So we've got to make sure that we don't put anything in our friend's way that will make them do something that isn't right for them. When something isn't specifically listed in the Bible, we can trust God to help us know what is right. We can listen to our parents and trusted leaders and to the Holy Spirit in our hearts to know what we should do. But even when it's okay for us to do something our friends aren't allowed to do, we should be loving to our friends. Helping them disobey isn't loving. You don't want someone to trip and fall because you tempted them to do something that they know they shouldn't do. Change the channel, watch something else, listen to different music, and don't rub it in their face if you have permission to do something they aren't allowed to do. Your friends will learn from your good example. Good friends help us say no to temptation. Just find something else to do. God always gives us another way to have fun. In the end, your friend will thank you, and your heart will too. Live pure. Don't tempt your friends to sin. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Wow, that actually helps out a lot. I'll help my friend obey his parents and find something else that's fun to do that doesn't involve mooses. Mooses? I'm not sure. Maybe it's meese? Ah, oh, Jake, I uh, popped you some popcorn. I was looking for you, but I uh, got distracted. It's okay. How's the movie? Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll pause it. I, I know you don't like it, and I don't want to cause you to have nightmares. You don't have to. I'm not scared anymore. Rodney told me they blow up the whole island at the end. And no spoilers! Monster moose, moose, moose. Bah. 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 Monster moose, 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 moose. Bah. I thought it was monster goose. Monster goose, 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 goose. Bah. Monster goose, 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 goose. Bah. I like monster goose better. We learned that living pure means helping our friends say no to temptation. God loved us so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, so that we could live pure. And when we believe that, we can accept God's grace and choose to follow Jesus. If you want to follow Jesus, all you have to remember are the A, B, C's. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. All right, I hope you guys all enjoyed uh, the adventures at Connect HQ today. And I hope you have a great week, whether you're going back to school this week or whether you have one more week of summer. Uh, I 
trust that it'll be a great week either way. Trust God and remember that he is always looking out for you. Uh, this is Pastor Rob. I'm going to be signing off. Oh, and by the way, while you guys were watching your message this morning, I found a silly song. All right, I'm going to take you out with this. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. I know an old lady who swallowed a spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a bird. Now how absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed a bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. I know an old lady who swallowed a cat. Now fancy that, to swallow a cat. She swallowed a cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly, but I don't know why she swallowed the fly.